Okay, fantastic. That looks right. Hi, everybody! Welcome to Play by Play. My name is Sean Bouchard. It is fantastic to be here and to have you all here. Um, this is uh, a show where I play games and um, uh, talk about the experience design of them from the perspective of a, uh, a game design teacher. Um, I teach uh, uh, I teach in the interactive media and games department at USC, um, mostly systems design and experience design stuff, and I make uh, games in the Game Innovation Lab. Um, and I like to play games, and I like to talk about playtesting and experience design. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to do tonight. So uh, super, super glad to have you here. Tonight we're playing uh, a game called Children of Zodiarchs uh, by Cardboard Utopia. Um, Cardboard Utopia is a new indie studio, uh, but their membership includes people who have worked in the past on some of my favorite games, uh, Eternal Darkness, um, which if you do not remember that, look that up. Uh, it was fantastic. Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Really, really cool, interesting game. Um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, uh, The Warriors, Far Cry 3. Really, really interesting stuff. People uh, come together, form this indie studio, uh, put together a Kickstarter that was fantastically successful. Uh, they're also part of the Square Enix Collective, uh, which I don't know exactly what that means. Um, and uh, I'm really curious about how that relates to their publishing model and their funding model. Um, and uh, we might learn a little bit more about that from Jason Kim, uh, who is joining us tonight in the chat. Um, Jason is the creative director and CEO for uh, Cardboard Utopia. Uh, so this is his game as, as much as it is anybody's. Um, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really, really excited to have him here. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. A um, couple of uh, little things before we get started real quick. Um, I want to note that uh, this is the last week. In fact, I think it's the last three days uh, of the Kickstarters for Robotery 101 and Fight or Flight. Um, both of these are uh, tabletop game projects that were created by students of mine. Um, and they're both really cool, exciting games. Uh, Robotery has funded and they're working on stretch goals. Um, Fight or Flight has not yet funded, uh, but they have some really cool uh, backer tiers, including um, for those of you who are not uh, quite so into that game, um, they have a, uh, a stickers and postcards tier where you get to, um, you get some of their really cool, interesting unusual artwork. Um, so I would encourage you to check those out uh, because they are students of mine and they're projects that I really believe in. Um, as always, uh, check out the links below for uh, forums, um, the community discard, discord, um, lots of community uh, places uh, and places to find out about the cool community projects that are going on. Thank you so much to everybody who has um, donated or subscribed to the channel uh, since I became an affiliate. Uh, it's really overwhelming uh, and I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I am working on uh, putting together emotes. Uh, so those should be coming very, very shortly. I'm really excited about them. Um, okay, we're gonna play video games now. Is this volume good? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go with it. Okay, Children of Zodiacs. Playing normal difficulty. Um, I, so I don't know a lot about this game. I, this actually sort of like uh, I was introduced to it just in the last few days as it launched. Um, so I'm gonna be learning a lot about the game as we go. Am I, is this a, uh... I'm actually not 100% sure if this is a loading screen or, um... 
The game seems to be entirely controller driven, but I am not interacting with anything here. Okay. Let's um Let's chalk this up to I had the game running for a long time in the background and just whoops, whoops. Just relaunch it. Forgive me, guys. Okay. <laughs> what, did, what did I do? Oh, geez. Oh, gosh. Here we go. This looks more like it. What is a Zodiac? That's the question. Uh, to some, a technological miracle, a source of limitless energy, a pathway to hidden knowledge, to others an infinitely corrupting influence, an alien parasite, a weapon. The Zodiacs were gifts of the Heralds who came to Loomis over a thousand years ago from a dark and dying world. Oh no, oh gosh, oh no. Okay, let's try this one more time. Uh, it's possible that because um, I have uh, whoops, because I have uh, this running in a window in sort of an odd resolution, uh, that's causing problems for us. The Zodiacs brought incredible changes to the world. They provided a way to manifest human will into physical reality. Uh, an age of incredible wonders followed. An age that ended in a terrible war. Look at this artwork. This is gorgeous. From the ashes of that glorious age, new societies arose and much of the past was forgotten. The world found a simple peace. Over the centuries, fragments of the past were uncovered, including the history of the mysterious Zodiacs. Wise men found Zodiac relics and, in time, rediscovered their purpose. Uh, a new Zodiac age had begun. Okay. So this is sort of a grand uh, falling and rising of empires. Uh, deep inside the nobles district in the ancient city of Taurus, a band of thieves make a daring incursion into the private chambers of a wealthy Tauran merchant. Look at that isometric view. Uh, Zerkov, I think? Zerkov has amazing purple lipstick. Uh, if in this the best resistance the mighty Torrent City Guard has to offer, I might just steal all your precious relics. To think you weaklings is what pass for law and order. If and I was a noble and with you protecting me, I'd be quivering in my gold-threaded slippers. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, God, I love getting victory conditions. Uh, ransack the noble's tower... Uh, do not allow Zerkov to be defeated. Sounds good. Player phase. Any game that has phases is is great in my book. Uh, to move a hero, first select it and then select its destination. Uh, okay, so I'm using the joystick uh, to sort of move around like this. Select a hero. Uh, I can I can see kind of movement range as I'm just like looking around. I'm gonna go left like that and then 
Uh, it looks like guard is an action that I can take, and it's the only action that I have available to me. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna hit help. Move a hero, select a card, choose a target, choose a facing direction. Uh, light blue tiles, movement, range preview. Dark blue, select movement. Yellow tiles, range of card. Red green tiles, uh, target area of the card will uh, affect. Backstab, uh, cannot be counter, so there's counter attacks. Um, okay, cool. None of that is immediately uh, necessary for me, I don't think. Okay, oh, and then I choose a facing direction. Got it, I'm gonna face this way. Okay, this officer, uh, who, sorry, I've been playing a bunch of XCOM 2 in, in my downtime. Uh, he looks like an XCOM 2 advent officer with the red visor over the eyes, um, except, like, way more nervous. Uh, stop thief, help, it's a break-in. Uh, help, stop thief, those are your last words? Come on, man, you really want that on your tombstone? I thought you guards were about honor and guts. Uh, I like that dialogue. Give me your best shot. Let's see what you're made of. Okay, so he spent his whole turn uh, just uh, calling for help. Uh, heroes play cards in order to perform their actions. Cards a hero can play are found in the hero's hand. So very, very uh, straightforward... Um, like tabletop gaming metaphors. So I'm gonna, oh, okay, yeah, I wasn't moving. I have to select my hero. I have two crashing down cards. Uh, I, I can't really preview them, um, but I'm, I'm gonna assume that I wanna be adjacent to this guard captain guy. And then I can choose one of the two crashing down and it's previewing for me uh, what their their range is. And then I can choose a facing. So four to 16 hit points, two, two counter attack. I wonder if those are ranges or if that's, um, uh, oh, um, so Jason in the, the chat is, uh, or maybe just whispering to me, is asking, what do I wish to preview? Um, I was just noting that uh, I started out with these two abilities. It's less of a concern during this tutorial phase because they're both the same ability. Uh, so I'm not actually making any decisions or anything like that. But um, I start out with these two ability cards. I sort of understand how they work. I'm going to be able to choose one. So I'm going to be able to choose, I'm going to be able to do this ability at the end of my movement. Um, but I actually don't have a sense yet of what that will do, or more importantly, what its range will be. So um, I, I made some conservative assumptions about wanting to be adjacent to the enemy and not wanting to be diagonal to them. And it turns out that that was smart, or that was at least lucky, because uh, the ability that I'm using now doesn't work diagonally. It only works in um, sort of, you know, Manhattan adjacent uh, squares. Um, but there was no way for me to see that kind of information about what those cards would do, or at least it wasn't immediately apparent to me how I would preview what those card abilities were while I was still in the movement phase. I had to move first, and then I could see what all of the abilities were. It's, uh, probably not a problem during the game, because presumably as these abilities get added to my hand, I'll be familiar with them. I'll become familiar with them, so I won't, I won't need that. Um, okay, every time a card is played, dice are thrown to enhance and affect its full outcome. Uh, hold, I'm assuming A, or the left mouse button, uh, to grab dice. Release while moving to throw dice. Uh, every die on the table counts towards affecting the card played. Okay. Select confirm once you're done reviewing the dice on the table. There's some kind of a reroll mechanic. Um, so I can, I can move them around. I am holding A to sort of gather them and 
and then roll them and they that's cool that's super cool all right so um this will be so okay i'm i'm gonna assume that everybody here is familiar with card games uh where you have hands of cards and even extrapolating from that even if you're not a tabletop gamer the idea that cards uh uh are actions that you can play. All of that should make sense. Dice games, dice rolling games, um, for people who don't play modern board games and uh, don't play Yahtzee might be a little bit more unfamiliar, but this is using uh, some elements of, um, oh God, what's it called? Roll and write, roll and write games uh, that are uh, basic and very familiar to, to people who are familiar with that genre. Um, each die symbol has a different effect on your card's outcome. A shard increases the strength of attacks or healing. Um, and each heart heals the hero by five hit points. Uh, and there are more dice symbols that you can get. Uh, press the select back button at any time while in the dice table to see symbol descriptions. That's great. That's really good to have that reference available. Use re-rolling to get better dice results. For every dice roll, you can select up to two dice to pick up and re-roll. Use this to change the results of your original dice roll. So this is a really common mechanic in um, roll and write games. So I have three shards which increase the um, effectiveness of my attack. And then one heart, which heals me. Now, I don't need any healing at this point, right? So I'm going to re-roll that. And I'm going to re-roll one of these. I'm actually... I think this attack is worth eight. I'm not going to re-roll. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm just going to re-roll my heart. I'm going to leave all of my attack boosts on the table. So then this guy, I re-roll, and I got a heart again. That's fine, that's okay, that, that doesn't hurt. Uh, maybe it's good because I don't know how the counter system works. Okay, now I can't re-roll anymore, I only get that one shot at re-rolling. Okay, so I did seven damage. Healed myself for five, which didn't do anything, then got counterattacked. Now I choose my facing. Okay, now he's doing his attack, which he does two damage, and I get an automatic counterattack for five damage. Cool. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. Seems super straightforward. Um, I'm being told that on the dice table you can see how much damage you'll do above the target's portrait on the bottom. I'm going to look for that next time. Uh, what's going on in here? Enforcer. Enforcer looks beefy. Robbery in progress. Don't they teach you dog snappy lines to intimidate people with? Honestly, you guys need to work on technique. Gotta at least try to sound threatening. Uh, with that heavy armor, it's going to take a new tactic to get through you. Okay. Uh, my skewer attack should get the point across. So I had a crashing down attack. Uh, pan, rotate, zoom. Yeah, that all makes sense. I had already. Oh God, I wonder. Oh, sh okay. We're gonna we're gonna test out this game hardcore. Uh, can I? That's just informational. Can I invert Y axis camera? No. Um, so the thing that I want to do is invert the x-axis of this uh, rotate. Because um, uh, it's, it's currently uh, what I think of as inverted. When I push to the left, it goes to the right. My No, the view pans to... I don't know, it's confusing. It's backwards from what I want it to be. It doesn't matter easy enough to figure out. Also, it's a turn-based game, so... Uh, do I want to just charge ahead? I guess just charge ahead. And then... None of these are any good, so I'm going to guard, and I'm going to face him. Q... 
he is doing an attack. Ooh, okay. And my counterattack does nothing. Okay. Okay, I kind of saw a preview of that flash by. All right, but now he's next to me. So I can do this. I'm just gonna stand right here and I'm going to skewer, which it says does uh, one pierce armor. And then it has two blue star symbols. Um, okay, all right, so I, I'm i doing between five and 18 hit points and he gets no counterattack. I think I'm reading that properly. Okay. Oh, I got two special dice. Uh, those are maybe my armor piercing dice? I'm gonna look up this table of uh, dice symbols. Shield prevents one hit point of counterattack damage. Okay, that's good. Stars trigger special effects on cards. Got it. Uh, draw cards. Uh, lightning gives you an extra action. Uh, oh, and then there's cursed stuff. That's no good. All right, let's roll some dice. Okay, what do I got? Uh, I am I am preparing to do four damage to him, and he will do three counterattack damage to me. Um, but also, I need healing, so. Oh, this is three shards. This is only one shard, I think. And how much healing do I really need? So I'm gonna reroll this. And I mean, let's see what we can do. Uh, and reroll. Wait, 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 wait. Did I just knock over one of my dice with another die? And it counted. Oh, wait, whoa, wait, what? Wait. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Did that, it, it flashed as though it were counting this as a new roll. Um, let's see if I heal it all. If I don't heal it all, then it did what I think it did. It actually, the physics of my second roll, knocking one of my previous dice over, did that affect my, like, canonical roll? Uh, based on what's showing on the table, I should get two special effects. Three, six, nine, ten uh, damage things. Which it does say negative 10 on my damage, which maybe that's what that means. Okay, I got a card. Oh gosh, I mean, because I killed him, I'm not 100% sure what happened, but I didn't heal at all. So I th think that means that's right. That is... I gotta process that. That is like super, super amazing crazy. Like, I don't know how to, ah, uh, okay, all right, okay. Um, think you're so tough, you're nothing but a thug. Know your place, this is the nobles district, you're kinda not worthy to sully its floors. Guards spread out, don't let this gutter scum leave the room alive. Uh, this guy's got some swagger, and he's brought me the kind of challenge I can sink my teeth into. Uh, I mean, look at this thief dude. He is just itching for a fight. All right, vi new victory conditions. Defeat Chief Justice. Uh, don't die. Um, all right, this is the tough guy, Enforcer. This is the officer who has more health, uh, but no armor. And then, I don't know what these guys are up here. Oh, that's another officer. Okay. Um, I mean, I, let's, let's risk it. Let's go this way. Um, I'm blocked. So there is sort of a, a, a blocking system of you can't move through occupied squares. Um, and then I'm going to... Oh, thank God I have a skewer. I guess I didn't... 
I should have looked. I probably, I could have known. If I had looked, I would have known whether I had a skewer or not. Good that I have a skewer. Okay, this is going to do between 0 and 12 hit points, and I'm open to 4 points of counterattack damage. Uh, I can use healing. I want lots of shards, and I probably want those, those stars. I'm still not 100% sure what the stars do. Okay. Okay, I got one star. Ooh, yikes. Yikes. All right, I don't because I don't know what the stars do. I'm going to just leave that as is. I assume stars are good, but I'm going to reroll two of these. And actually, oh, can I replicate this? Oh no! No good. All right. So, um, but I get some healing. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, three, four shards. I only do four damage. That makes sense. I get healed for ten, which heals me all the way up. But then I'm gonna take four damage. I got one star. We'll see what that does. Plus 10. I got a skewer card. I'm guessing I got a skewer card. Oh, who's who hits harder, do you think? Probably him. Um, I, do I just always get at least two cards, maybe? Uh, he's going to do three damage, and then I'm, I'm gonna, my counterattack is going to be no good. But at least I got another skewer. Uh, oh gosh, I wonder... Okay, he's just defending. He's playing conservative. Thank you, Tutorial AI, for doing that. Now that I have everyone's attention, where's that Nami? Where indeed? It's over there? Oh! 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 I have a second party member. Uh, excuse me, miss, what did you say your name? Wait a minute! Did you just come in through a window?! <laughs> it's her! The ebony flame is here! Uh, guess I can't pull off Sweet and Innocent. Alright, doggy, we'll do this your way. It's interesting that they both have referred to the guards as dogs. I wonder if that's uh, specific world building or um, just sort of coincidental insult. Still trying to defeat Chief Justice Riven. Uh, can't let either of my characters die. Um... Okay, who am I controlling? Oh, I can choose. I get to select. All right, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna, we are going to skewer because I think I can take this guy down. Skewer this way. I gotta do at least four points of damage. Let's see how it goes. Oh, yes. Oh, awesome. All right. So, uh, here is what I am going to do. Uh, oh, God. So, this is amazing. This is amazing. Traditionally, here's here's how this would play out. In a traditional roll and write game, you get you do this re-rolling thing, right? So, uh, I have rolled six di dice. Uh, I get to pick two of them, up to two of them, and re-roll them. Um, the other ones I set aside, I know that they are protected. Uh, so, for example, what I would do here is I would say, like, I have rolled... Uh, I only need to do four damage. Um, I've rolled a three shard and a one shard. Two three shards, two one shards, uh, a star and a no star. Um... I would love... I'm going to roll two of these to try to get, like, health or something like that. Um, if I... I Normally, I could just pick two. I could pick, like, the no star, because that one seems useless, and e any of these other ones, uh, except for the star. Um... But I'm in this weird position where actually I can roll these. I could, if I don't pick the no star, 
I can try to knock over that die uh, and get and actually reroll three of them, um, which seems like a really good idea. Uh, but th on the other hand, the the dice that I know that I have that I want, like a three shard, and the adding up to at least four damage, aren't safe. If I like roll crazy and knock over one of those, conceivably I could end up with not enough damage. Um, like if I roll my three and my uh, a three and a one shard and I knock into my three shard and it rolls into a one or a heart or something, then I'm, I don't do enough damage. So I'm gonna leave both of my threes up, but they're also positioned, right? Like now I also care about the physical positioning of the dice cause I can't like move them over to protect them. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is so fucking crazy. This is awesome. Um, I'm gonna take these two dice uh, I am going to re-roll them. I'm going to try to re-roll them straight down the middle in a way that will knock over this blue die that is showing nothing, but not hit any of the other dice. And I'm going to fail miserably at this, I'm pretty sure. Okay, at least I didn't knock anything else over. I didn't get anything good for that, but it's fine. I still did the damage that I needed to do. Killed him. Uh, I'm gonna face this way. Okay, and now, uh, interesting, why for more info? Okay, I'm gonna come back to that. That's a lot of information. Um, interesting that I still see a movement preview here. Uh, because I don't, I, but the character is blacked out, right? Like it's, it, the character is dark. What happens if I try to select? Yeah, it's just, uh, I can't select. All right, we're going to select uh, Nami. Nami has a bunch of blitz abilities. Again, I'm going to assume that I need to be adjacent to an enemy to use them. And again, I'm right. Okay, great. These are all the same. They're all 11 blitz. I'm going to do it. It's a 10 to 12. That's interesting. Um, so I only have four dice. Uh... Two of them are shield dice. Both of them have some shields on them. All right. But only two of them have any shards on them. So I got two shards, which means I will do the full 12 damage, which will kill this guy. Uh, so I don't think shields even do me any particular good, but I will reroll this just cause. I mean, look, holy shit, did you see that? You gotta be really careful when you re-roll. That is an amazing mechanic. That's something I've never seen before. Uh, and something that, frankly, could probably only be done in a digital interpretation of uh, this sort of tabletop game mechanic. Um, I, there is, in most roll and write games, there's a sense that, like, even if you're not likely to get a great result, if you have the result that you want, then go ahead and re-roll some of those dice, because maybe you'll get really lucky and something great will happen. In this game, that there's a tension between that exact same mechanic and this sense that even if you have the dice that you need, they are not really locked down if you choose to reroll anything. Um, there is a small chance that you could just destroy yourself. That's really cool. That is really, really cool. Okay, uh, Nami, oh, Nami chooses facing. That's right. Now enemy phase, we got a couple of enemies left. Uh, he's gonna do one, d oh wow, that's, that's good for me. Uh, that's a strong counterattack against this unarmored enemy. And the, the dude that I'm actually trying to defeat isn't like really attacking. Nami can do backstabbing. So, and that's, 
at least part of why facing matters. Uh, backstab inflicts more damage, cannot be counterattacked. Choose wisely when picking the direction you're facing at the end of your turn. Cool. All right, uh, let's do that first. Let's start there. So I am going to attack from directly behind. I'm going to choose any of my blitz abilities. I'm going to backstab, so no counterattack. And then uh, I only need to do 12 damage, which I could conceivably do right here. Uh, now, I am going to reroll this one and this one. Again, the shields don't really matter to me because I'm not getting... Oh. Yes, I did. Oh. Okay, somehow I'm doing 14 damage. I thought I could only do 12. Okay. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. No complaints. Backstab, 14. Uh... There he goes. He goes down. Uh, yarg. You'll pay for this. Justice will be served. Um, he had an amazing facial expression, too, in that, in that image. And I didn't have to defeat the last guy, because I, I completed my victory objectives, which I appreciate. Um, Pester, you can come in now. Pester didn't even come in? What? What the heck, Pester? Holy crap! <laughs> um, we mopped the floor with them. Bony Hand of Fate wasn't kind to the Nobles District today. Uh, oh no! Uh, oh god, does this game have autosaves? I'm just gonna I'm gonna boot this up and we're gonna see if uh Auto save. Perfect. Go with that. Oh no. Did I not load the autosave? Wait, hold on. Hold hold on, hold on. We're gonna Okay guys, we're gonna uh we're gonna take a break because it's about time for a break anyway. We're gonna take a short break. I'm gonna see if I can figure this out. We're gonna try to get our game back. Otherwise we'll just speed through this again. Alright, uh I'll be be right back. <laughs> 